But everybody, welcome to Evil Ted Live here on twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith. Uh, guys, don't forget this. I stream live Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. And I stream on Thursdays from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In this episode, I got myself here a Bit Boy. We're going to modify this today. The cool thing about this, it's got a little ventricular plastic there, makes it move. Uh, there's no lights or sounds or anything like that. It's, not, it's able to keep it inexpensive. But what we're going to do is we're going to modify it, paint it, and put lights in it today. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Um, this, uh, we'll definitely want to put a light here and there's a little spot back here. You can put a light. Uh, so what I went ahead and the cool thing is it, un it unlatches and you can open it up. So the first thing I want to do was go back here, screwdriver and went ahead and took the screws out. So now we have the screws out of it. Let's go ahead. Over. Ta -da. Oh, wow. Look at this. Nice. Now. <clears throat> The reason I'm taking this apart is because I am going to put lights in this. I can tell by the inspection of this, this is a lot of room back in here. This is nice. Um, definitely would fit a nine volt battery back in here. If I just cut this whole section out here, that'd be good for a battery spot. Now for these guys, uh, I definitely want to put a light. So I'm going to rig up an LED. So I'm definitely going to want to drill a hole in this. So let's go ahead and start with that. I always find when you're drilling things out, I'm going to drill it to fit a LED. Now I know what the diameter of my LED is, but when drilling, if you're starting with something, I always find it's best to start and have a pilot hole. And what a pilot hole is, is a smaller hole to help you guide the bit. Now if you start with a big bit, you'll drill it, but it might be a little bit off center. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to draw a really small hole right smack dab in the center with a small drill bit. Now let's go ahead and do it with the same thing right here. I got this bit picked up and the reason I picked this drill bit out, this is the same diameter as my LED. So we're gonna go ahead and just drill it right in here. Well, as you can see, I went ahead and drilled it, but I realized uh, there was a lot of hot glue back in here and I went ahead and pulled most of it off and it would free this up. So now you can actually remove this. So that's your option. So when you buy this, go ahead and pull the hot glue up from behind and just take this off and don't do as I did. <laughs> Just go ahead, pick the hot glue, and this came right out. Which now, by doing that, makes this LED sit in here just right on the top. Look at that, see? Much, much better. I like this a lot. Matter of fact, I might just um, take a little thin piece of craft foam and do a little circle gasket around this. See, much better. I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, of course, you guys can realize I have an, my lighting assembly is already done. This is um, wired up for a mask. And again, I never throw anything away, so I went and took everything about it. And all the elements are still here, so I thought it'd be great just to combine this old electronic rigging I had from a mask to put into my Pip Boy. So, our next step will be uh, we're going to cut out the battery compartment and a slot for the switch. Before I start placing everything, let's go ahead and remove all the essential hardware I don't need right now. So, this knob that's on here is a little fake knob. I take a screwdriver. We'll fill up, unloosen it, off it comes. So that's off, we'll set that over here. Uh, let's see, for painting. Oh great, the screw right here, let's go ahead and take this off. And that comes off, perfect. Again, for all you crafty people out there who do electronics, this, you could just cut this uh, notch off and make this where it actually is a working switch. Like a little, a little post back in there for an on off switch. That's for you electrical wizards. That's not for me. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole in here and stick a switch out of that. And since you don't see this, we don't really need to make a door or anything on it. I think we just go ahead and just, uh, just cut this open as is. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie and kind of plot out my, uh, my cut path here. Ta-da! All right, now that we have this all cut out, our next thing is to do placement. The battery's gonna fall in here. That's great. I need to have a switch. I need a slot for the switch. Um, and I'm going to do is, uh, I'm gonna drill a hole and just file out, opposed to trying to cut a slot. I think it'd be best just to drill a hole first, place it, and then cut a slot for it. See, that's a good sized hole for the switch to fit through, and what I'll do, I would definitely put it this direction so it flips up to turn it on. 
Uh, and the placement for that to allow room for the switch to move. Let's put it right, let's put it right there. Perfect, all right, now. So we just need to go down about this much for our switch to work. I devised a plan. I got my clamps, as you can see, I changed the, uh, the grip on the teeth on it so I can hold it right here, clamp onto this trigger or the switch. They'll keep it in the opposition right there where it needs to be and just let it stay like that. And I'll get some hot glue and I'll just dab it in there and let it kick off and they'll be able to flip it upright and get it on the outside. So. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run hot glue and just kind of hold in the position until it cools off and just kind of go all the way around this switch to make sure it's securely fastened before I uh, close this up. It looks pretty good. Let's do a lighting test. Let's snap the battery into this. Let's place the battery where it would be. Let's play it right there like that. And let's check our lights. Up, oh, yay, look at that, it works. Awesome. I would like just to take some foam and uh, cut a uh, rectangle and a piece of foam back here that would allow it to snug in really nice. That's gonna go right about here. So it doesn't need to be any bigger than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two together. I'm gonna use a little bit of contact adhesive. All right, open this up. The plan would be to drop the battery in snugly. Um, again, this switch is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut a notch out for the switch. I can get a little bit so I can get the uh, foam insert a little bit closer in. All right. That's it. See how it fits in here? Right there. Looking good. Now, we're just going to trace where the battery is going to go. Now, that is what I trace, so I'm going to cut on the inside. And the reason I'm doing this is so I know for a fact it'll be snug. I want the battery kind of like snug in there so it won't be loose. So I'm going to cut on the inside, Sharpie line. Mm, see, it's, this switch part is going to be a little bit of an issue, but that seems like it's going to work. We're going to put glue here. How glue does it put glue here, here, and on the back side here? That should do it. I just realized all this stuff on here, I need to rough this up. Sometimes hot glue does not stick to this, and I don't want to risk that. So let's go ahead and take a Dremel. Let's grind some of that off. We're going to go ahead and just do a little dabs here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up right here. I'm run some hot glue back in there. There it is, got it. It snugs right in there. Ta-da! That actually snugs in there really nice and fit. So now I know for a fact it's gonna stay right there. All right, everything's all done, it's all secured. I got my light switch, you can see everything's working. Our next step is we're going to put this together, install the lights in before we put it together. And I went ahead and it had a button on here I went ahead and took off. I'm gonna put an LED back in here. And of course, it's got a lot of uh, slop into it and gap. Then it got me thinking, I'm gonna make a little black rubber, a uh, little foam gasket to go around this. And I think the size for this would be perfect. So I'm gonna take some black, black two millimeter craft foam with my brass tube and cut one out. Pop that sucker out like this. And then, now with a thinner brass tubing, I'm gonna cut a hole in the center of that and I'm going to glue that, well, super glue, I'm going to glue that onto this. They kind of give a little bit, it just needs a little something, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. All right, I got the knobs, everything screwed back together. So we're going to glue in the top bulb first here. All the lights have been glued, all the switches have been screwed back in. Now we're going to go ahead and put this back together. 
Make sure I get my wires all together. Line everything up. Now, before you throw screws back in this, it's always safe just to do one more check with the lighting. So here we go. Hey, hey, hey. A little bit. That's awesome. All right. Go upside down. Let's put the screws back in. All right, good. Our pit boy. There he is. What we one thing I did off camera is I went ahead and masked this yesterday and painted it uh, with silver enamel paint. And the reason I did that yesterday because this is enamel paint. At least takes eight hours to dry uh, completely because I don't want to paint something and then handle it while I'm working on it because I'll just put fingerprints on it. So I went ahead and painted this yesterday. Let it have good eight hours to dry so I can manhandle this today and paint it without the fear of damaging this. So for all you people out there who do get one of these, definitely mask this off or paint this silver because it's a nice little detail piece. My favorite paint, Tamiya Flat Black and a little bit of, uh, what we got here? This is a Flat Earth. I'm gonna mix these two together. I'm gonna make it kind of a dark, ruddy, uh, like a dark ruddy brown and I'm going to uh, airbrush into the details. We're gonna do, when, when mixing colors, it's always best to start with the lightest color. Black will dominate. If you start with black and just start adding stuff to it, it'll never work. Black is a really strong color. Especially with Tamaya, the pigments are super strong. Yeah. I'm gonna take some alcohol and I wanna thin it down a little bit. This color is pretty concentrated and it's a little thick too. So, cause I'm gonna shoot this through an airbrush. We're gonna take this airbrush and we're gonna proceed to get all the nooks and crannies. All right, guys, the airbrush I put in there, it's all dry. And our next step is we're going to go through and get some steel wool. And I like to get the not one, not two, three, four zeros, zero, zero. It's super fine steel wool. We're gonna take the fine steel wool and we're gonna come back in and start taking the paint off. Let's see. So just try to rub on the highlight areas and leave a majority of it in. I want to get between these guys a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of fine steel wool, uh, pull a piece of it, I got a Q-tip. I'm going to wrap the fine steel wool around my Q-tip. That'll allow me to get in here. I had some yellow vinyl and some black vinyl and I cut some thin strips and I made myself a new sticker. Originally I was going to paint this, but since I had some yellow vinyl and black vinyl, I went ahead and just made my own little sticker. So let's go ahead and pull this guy off. All right now I got the sticker on there. Of course, it still looks a little bit brand new. And I'm going to solve that problem by taking my airbrush. All right. As you guys can see, all right, got this. This looks good. I'm going to add a little bit more, like do some browns, kind of sporadic. Do some dirt on this thing. Rub and buff. And what I'm gonna do is with the rub and buff, I'm going to do little highlights on the corners because in my head, this pit boy from Fallout, this is all metal and these dials are plastic. So the dials I'm gonna keep black. I throw that in like this, like that. Take some tape. Again, I'm just doing this because I'm gonna spray some clear on this and I don't want the uh, it's ventricular plastic and I don't want, out of fear of it doing something, I don't want screwing up the, uh, the cool ventriculars. I want to keep that clean as much as possible. All right, so I went ahead and got, got my matte finish coat on. It's all dried. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape out and you're just gonna hit the corners. Rub buff's a great way to do some little highlights and details, but for this, I'm having a little trouble controlling. There's so many different levels. I'm afraid I'm gonna get rub and buff in places I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and take some Tamiya silver chrome and a brush. I'm going to paint on my, uh, my nicks and scratches. And it's nice and just really bright. So I'm just going to do that a little bit. Just do some scratches. Big, big chip scratch here. My pit boy is officially painted. It's all done. The only thing I want to do next is when you open this up and put it on your arm, it's just kind of, kind of floppy. It doesn't really hold. So what I end up doing 
is I cut some upholstery foam. I have some black, uh, more like I'd say gray upholstery foam. And we're going to glue them in like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of glue them long so that they have a little bit of an overhang. And I'll just cut them to fit. If you notice, open and close, what I do is I cut it. But I always try to cut it at the angle it closes. So I take a knife, sharp one. Like that. The moment of truth. And there. Beep. Hey, 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 hey. There it is. Look at that. It's my Pip Boy. Ta-da, there it is, my Pip Boy. This was a great fun mod. Again, everybody, if you wonder where I got this, I got this the Spirit Halloween store on the link below the video. And I had fun modding, putting lights in it. And of course, the last but not least, the cool thing to do is paint it and age it. And show you all the tips and techniques I did go about doing this. At eviltedsmith.com, go to my website. While you're at my website, you can get on my mailing list. And while you're there, you can also go to my uh, Fan Photo Friday. If you uh, built a costume and you've been inspired by watching my videos, please submit your photos of your costumes to Fan Photo Friday. And in return, I will send you a postcard, button, a letter, uh, and I'll put your picture up on my website and give you all the links and information on there and give you a bit of a shout out. Again, everybody, if you like what you're watching, don't forget to subscribe and go to my website. I have numerous patterns for sale too. If you're a newbie and you want to get into cosplay, I have lots of real simple basic patterns to get you started. And if you guys would like to have me at your local con, the best thing is to write your con and say, hey, we would like to have Evil Ted at our convention. That's simple. Let them know. Power in numbers, everybody. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is a blast making it, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.